already yeah. know the square I be, dog. I ain't being cocky, but Philly, what I'm reppin', watch me check it like it's hockey. I ain't tryna get it twisted. If you get it, then you got me. If you with it, cool. If not, I'll treat you like a Tamagotchi. I'ma let you down, point. Yeah, I never dis. What's going on, guys? J Hoyt back with you today. Welcome back to episode. I think it's number 10 of the Seattle Attack franchise mode. The last nine episodes have been kind of uh, a big failure in uh, in the eyes of the owner and in my eyes. That uh, two straight seasons we have not made the playoffs. And uh, we need to definitely do that next year or else, you know, we got to rebuild the already rebuilding team or, you know, whatever you want to really call it. We need to fix it. So we are in the off season yet again. I know the the videos are kind of flying by right now at least, but it's only because the season isn't very long because we're not going to the playoffs. We're not making the run. We're not, you know, extending the season longer than, you know, a couple episodes where we go, you know, a couple months at a time. But this video, like I said, we are in the off season Starting with the entry level draft, if you guys remember last episode, we kind of went through the playoffs, and uh, usually I would do that in this video, but I think I'm this how the way I'm going to do it now is if we don't make the playoffs, I'll just simulate through it, and then we'll get up to the off season. No one retired on our team except for Chris Neal, who we had in the minors for uh, basically salary only, uh, but other than that, nothing really interesting happened. I believe we had the seventh overall pick, if I remember correctly. And uh, we have a pretty good draft for you. And so let's see who we could possibly get. We have a lot of good players, basically. You have, you can see I have a couple of people pinned here. A lot of good players there. Don't think we're going to get any of the good ones. But uh, if it falls out in my favor, there is one player I really liked. And uh, hopefully it actually does. So we are seventh, like I said. But I think he's going to go number three. And... Uh, the only reason why I say that is because he's a very, very good player. And uh, his name is, I think it's Greg, no, Gabriel Alanco, I'm going to go with. But uh, right-handed defenseman, very, very good. And I believe he becomes really good. If I remember him correctly, I have seen this player before. But I feel like he's going to be a good player. And after that, there, like, if you look at his stats here, there's not really, like, if you go down a little bit, just to just say this guy... They aren't really there, you know what I mean? So, guys like that, I don't really want to pass up if I can. But I don't really want to wait just in case he gets taken with this pick. However, like I said, we don't really have the the picks to really trade up for him. But then again, we have a 7th overall pick. Right there. However, we're still going to need a little bit to throw onto that. And where I was kind of thinking... Was if he's going to be our right defenseman of the future. What if we threw in a guy like Sammy Vatanen, right? He didn't really perform well this year. He's got two years, so they're going to want to accept it. Because he's not expiring immediately. And it gives us a little bit of, uh, you know, youngness on the back end. Because after, like, we don't really have good draft picks right now. I mean, we have Logren still, you know, growing. And then we have, uh, where is he? Noah Dobson that we need still need to sign. But we don't really have many good defensive prospects. And I feel like this is going to make our, our team a little bit better. We can't trade Brennan Smith, which is unfortunate. Because that was another option I was thinking of. But uh, something like this I was thinking about. However, I feel like it's a little bit too one-sided. I mean, a top four defenseman and, a, and the seventh overall pick for the third. A little bit uneven there. So what I was kind of thinking was, what if we can get something back from them? And there's a guy like Sean Day, I think it is, that we could possibly get. There's some lower tier guys like Zarkov, you know, Lazarov here. And there's plenty of prospects here. But if we just go with picks, then it gives us more, you know, this year. I mean, I don't really know. I did not plan this trade ahead of time in case you couldn't tell. But uh, what if we just go with uh, next year's second? Does that work? No, okay. So it doesn't really fit their trade block really well. Uh, what about next year's, not first, how about third? All right, so I've been close apparently. They do want Vatnin. They they do want him. So I guess if we're not going to go with a you know a top three pick, what if we just go this year with Buffalo? Okay, I'll take it. So this is strictly to get that one guy. 
And hopefully he doesn't disappoint me as far as his overall goes. So Gabriel Alonco, please be good. 77. Okay, good. So he'll probably grow into about an 80 overall, and he might be in the NHL in the first year. So I'm kind of glad we did that. Vatnin didn't really perform well this year. You know, we need more of a more of a two-way defense because we have Shattenkirk there. We have Martinez, and both of those guys are offense, and we needed a, a little bit different in uh, in our defensive core. So hopefully that will uh, will give us a, a good pick here. Also, I should mention we do have some guys on the trade block just to see if we could uh, get a good trade out of any of them. But uh, a third-round pick for Deneau, I'm not really feeling it. You know, we still have another year on him. You know, I'm not really afraid to uh, to do that. But uh, let's just go see who's uh, who went after our uh, top three guys. So uh, looks like a couple of good picks here. You know, mid-60s. That's good to see. Uh, one player, actually, it's probably later on, I would assume. Put, oh, there he is. Uh, franchise, He uh, I saw him in the uh, scouting, but I assumed he was not going to be there when we picked. But low 50s. Okay, 60s, 50s. Okay, so not really... Uh, not really crazy picks, but okay. So we have a sixth overall, second round pick. Who is out there? So we got uh, a lot of people that aren't scouted very well. And uh, I don't really see anyone I want. So let's go, let's scroll down a little bit here. Top six. Okay, seven. What, what are these two guys? So okay, you, you're probably like average. Ooh, top six. See his like, his green stats are good. Like, those are more accurate. So, I'm kind of feeling... Should we just upgrade our defense with this top six guy? Let's go with this guy. Let's let's see what he is. 69 overall. All right, I'll take top four. I'll, I will take that any day of the week. See, so a lot of guys around that range are not going to be that great. But a 69 overall, I'll take it. So, let's continue on here. See who else we could possibly get in the draft. So, a second round pick for Deneau and one of our random AHL guys. So, 62 overall. That's in three picks. Okay. I mean, if you guys don't remember, Deneau was on our third line this year. Yeah, I wanted to improve our, our center depth anyway. And this kind of cleans that up a little bit because uh, Pajot did do a little bit better than Deneau and I do want to get a better second line centerman so I probably was going to get rid of either Deneau or Pajot so this trade actually looks really good for us honestly a second round pick for Deneau and for that guy that we signed late last year I'm down get rid of him so we got another pick here which I wasn't really planning on making but you know what we uh we have him now once again we didn't really scout these guys we spent a lot of time in the WHL this year and uh, a lot of the players that were at the top were from the WHL. So it's kind of tough to that situation. But uh, I'm kind of looking at a goaltender right now. I mean, I don't know what else to, to really say. There's a there's a few goaltenders right here. Zetterberg and Zerodano. Uh, one is Swedish. One is, what is that flag? Is that Latvia? I don't remember. But let's go with the Swedish goaltender. Uh, what's his name? P uh, per? per Zetterberg? Let's pick a goaltender. See what happens. 53 overall, you know, he'll have to grow into the game. But, uh, you know, we can never stop improving our team. Third round pick, now sixth overall. Uh, we have similar picks because this is actually seven picks after the other one. So, uh, what, what do we need? We need right wings, actually. Right wings. So, power forward, 17 years old. I'm trying to avoid 17-year-olds just because they take a while to grow. Uh, camp up here, Switzerland doesn't really have this is the tough part about drafts is because they don't really have a lot of guys that are you know scouted very well so guys like this are scouted a little bit but a lot of these guys are not scouted which is the toughest part so i guess we'll just have to take a, a little bit of a risk on one of these guys kemp or normally with like a dempsey a del ranger 18 let's go with kemp i mean he's he's 19 so he might be able to step in right away 58 overall, that's not that's not horrible. I mean, I was expecting a little bit better, but you know what? We can't win them all. A second third round pick, I think it's 23 overall. And we can have the guy we actually just looked at. Uh, we could get him, Smits. Uh, we could go with a winger. Let's go with a winger. What is he? 54 overall. Now it's going to become probably the, 
the mid 50s overall uh, a show. Nothing really happened after the first three rounds, so that's why you didn't see it. But let's get right into the re-sign stage contracts. You know, we made a, a big trade that I was not expecting to make. However, when I was scouting, I did see Alonco, and I was like, okay, we could possibly make a move up there, but we'd have to trade away Vatnin. And you know what? We had to take a little bit of a risk there. But uh, like usual, let's start right off with our centerman. So now we have a little bit more solidified, uh, you know, center core. Like I said, we're going to have to try to find someone for the second line role. If we can move Pajot into that third line role, that would be the uh, the ideal plan. Let's re-sign Pajot here. He wants three years at 2.9. I feel like, uh, you know, he definitely earned money last year. But since he's probably going to, you know, reduce his role this year, probably go more on the penalty kill than power play and be more of a third liner than a second liner. Two years, 2.5 sounds a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more what I want there. Uh, let's see. Nash will probably be our fourth line centerman. Uh, Goudreau, uh, one year, one mil, I guess, for him. Uh, McNeil, you did great for us. But, uh, you know, we have some young guys that are coming into the lineup that we're going to have to uh, to give playing time to. As you can probably tell, we got Schlappick, Glass, Wolski, Kriski, you know, uh, whoever that was, Batherson. You know, and a bunch of the guys we have yet to sign. Left wings. All right, this should be interesting. So Spooner, you know, top line guy for us. Four year, uh, two, four mil at two years. Uh, what do you want? Okay, so two years. Let's go. What did he do last year? Or right, what was his? Okay, so he comes off a two point eight million dollar deal. Let's just go with. Uh, let's go with like three point seven five at like three years. Now let's now let's go two years. See what that brings us. Dvorak we have signed for uh, a little bit of a time. And here's where it becomes interesting. I would love to acquire, uh, you know, whether it's free agency or a trade, to get in another top line guy along with uh, hopefully Dvorak actually grows. But Colborn and Dezingle, although these two guys I definitely want to keep, I feel like they're going to not sign with us for whatever reason. But uh, I guess let's go 1.75 for him. Dezingle probably wants, okay, a little bit more than that. Uh, two years, two mil. Sounds a little bit better. I mean, he put up, what, 24 goals last year or something like that? Yeah, 24, 41 points. I mean, he, he went off on the power play. Uh, here's where we got to start releasing a few guys here. De La Rose. We got to release one of these guys. We got to give playing time to other guys. Uh, Lemieux, I feel like you never get better than that, but, uh, you know, that kind of actually leaves us a little bit slim. You want a two-way deal, so, uh, or a one-way deal, so we're going to release you. De La Rose, if you want two-way, we'll keep you. Nope. Uh, actually, we'll qualify him. We'll keep him. Greer, do you want to, no, you still want a two-way, that's good. And then we got Smiths down there that we just drafted. Right wings now, we're, we already have a fourth line, uh, fourth line right wing and Goudreau. But uh, Richie, let's try to get you back. Uh, two point four. Uh, how about how about two years at two mil? Because he was kind of all over the lineup, so I don't really know exactly what he's gonna be. But uh, Blandizi, I definitely want to bring him back if possible. He did well. He came up at the end of the last year. Prosser, uh, did you actually play for us last year? I feel like you. Okay, a little bit. Twenty three points. For, yeah, we didn't really give him a chance to play last year. So uh, we'll sign him and get him into the lineup this year. Birchie, you know, it's always good to have an extra person down there. Uh, anyone else who we could sign? No, I don't really want to sign Wooly, only because he's not really, uh, not really going to grow any farther than what he is. Uh, Brennan, I do want to keep our our defense, uh, our defensive core intact if possible. So uh, Brennan Smith, you do want a lot of money, but um, let's try to get you down to about three point five. I'd be happy with that. Hoka, if we could possibly bring you back, that would be uh, that'd be kind of acceptable. So let's go two years, two point five for him. Hopefully that works out. Let's sign Alonco. You're gonna want max, yep, max entry level contract. Uh, straight, nope. Uh, Olafson did very well in the AHL last year. I think we called him up at some point this year. I'd be done with that one. Uh, Goldman, I kind of want to wait a year on him. Just in case, Chicken McDonald, hate to do it, but your uh, the All Stars got to be released to get in some more playing time. Noah Dobson, let's actually let's actually sign you 
And actually, you know what, Goldman? Let's give him a chance. Let's try to sign him. Hopefully, he doesn't go uh, where he's, we can't bring him. Or I guess to put him in the AHL, I should say. Uh, goaltenders. So, uh, Lear, we don't need your services anymore. Uh, Zetterberg's there. So, we have Ian Scott this year. That's good. So, we actually have a guy under contract. So, here's where it's interesting. Corpusello, three years. Okay. So, three years, three mil. Hopefully, he grows this year. But that contract's not ridiculous where we can't move it if we need to. Uh, Neuver, okay, you want a lot less for being a backup. That is interesting. So we have a start and we have a backup. So I'll, I'll, I mean, even though they haven't really performed, I s still like that core. And even if we find someone better in free agency, you know, that'd be fine. But uh, who do we got now? Appleby, one year, that's fine with me. But uh, you know, let's let's see who actually signs. But half of the guys seemed like they didn't want to re-sign. I did not read, you know, why exactly, but I would guess of uh, team success and of uh, they want more money. So um, 4.25 for Spooner, two-year deal. Brendan Smith, I guess let's go 4 mil for you at two years. Pajot, let's, uh, what did he want? Two point, let's, we could go three years at three mil. I mean, I'm not really upset with that contract. Gives us a good third line center. Brett Ritchie, uh, 2.5 at two years. Maybe maybe we'll do one year if he doesn't want that. Uh, Polka. This is such a weird contract for a third liner. I mean, we kind of did the same thing with Smith. This is a lot of money into our third line defense, which is kind of weird. But uh, let's qualify him. Hopefully, we can get his numbers down a little bit. Uh, Colborn, I'm surprised you didn't resign. But uh, I guess 1.95. Hopefully, that will get him... Dezingle, two years, 2.5. I think we tried two mil last time. I'm fine with that. De La Rose under that still. We'll probably sign Nolan and McLeod next year along with Beach. Uh, the other two, probably not. But uh, defense, uh, Neuver was the only one that did not re-sign. Actually, let's give us a chance. Do we want to... I guess we could always pick him back up in free agency if we really want to. Because he actually, you know, held his own as far as being the starter. But let's release him. Let's give him a chance to go to a better team. And, uh, you know, we always have the chance of getting him back in free agency. Plus, he gives us the opportunity to see if there's a better goaltender. You know, a better, clear starter. You know, just all-around better goaltender. But uh, once again, let's advance today. See who's up. down to just three people that have not signed yet. I guess five if you count the restricted guys. But uh, all these guys basically want more money is uh, is basically what they're telling me. But um, let's go four point. Well, we're going to have to increase his years if we're going to, you know, 4.75 at three years. That looks good to me. Uh, Smith, I did we just offer? I think we just offered 4.25. But let's go with a 4.5 at two. And then Peugeot, let's go with, uh, I guess, 3.5. I guess I think we just did 3.0 uh, last time. But uh, hopefully that will get him. We got no more goaltenders. Let's advance today once again. And see who signs. Down to just one. Spooner was the only one that has not accepted yet. Let's go right for it. Five mil, two years. These two guys, hopefully they'll sign before uh, free agency. But if not, then uh, we'll take go to free agency. Hopefully they'll, uh, at least De La Rose, he should sign. I mean, I don't see anyone really giving us compensation for that one. But uh, advance a date. Let's see what happens. There we go. He signed finally. So let's get right into free agency. And hopefully we can find those key pieces that we're missing. Now we're at free agency. We did all the signings. We got everyone back that we wanted. Alrighty then. So we have uh, Patrick Line leading the way. But unfortunately, we are not going to be able to get him. Which which sucks because he's a restricted free agent. But a couple of pieces I see immediately that, that could possibly help us. And that is... Guys like Jalmerson would help us with uh, with defensive defenseman role. Jeff Skinner, someone like him, you know, that'd be what, like uh, 12 million, probably plus 13 mil. Then maybe someone like Broussard. I was thinking Spezza, but he's he's kind of 36, you know, doesn't really give us a chance for, uh, you know, a year or two of getting used to him. Derek Broussard, you know, 31, still got a couple of years. I mean, if we go for him, that's like 17 mil, probably 18 mil. For three players. So that could be an option. Uh, other than that. I mean. Unless we find someone crazy down here. That uh, maybe goaltenders. Would be their good goaltender on the market. Robin Leonard. 
we go for four guys, if we go for maybe Robin Leonard, right, he's still semi-young, he's at a good overall, I think better than Corpusello. give us a, you know, I guess if he wants two years, probably go like, we would have to probably go like 4.75, 5 mil for him, then if we go for, I guess like a Jalmerson, that's another probably 6.5, so that's 11. Skinner would probably be like 7. That'd be 18. Then if we go for a Brassard, that's probably another 6, 6.5, which would be, what, like 20... It's math. It'd be like 20-something mil. So I guess we could try to go for them. Like I said, we're going to have to overpay a little bit because we are not really doing well as a team. But if we go for a guy like Skinner and we go for a guy like John Merson, and we go for a guy like Broussard, we're going to have to spend a lot of money to get them. Is it worth it? Because we don't really have, I guess, tier... I could see them guys tier 2. I mean, we don't have superstars on our team right now, which really, really sucks. But let's go for let's go for those guys. Let's go for Jalmerson, Skinner, Broussard, and let's go for Leonard and see what happens. Trying to sign these four guys puts us at 20 5.25 million and we have 26 something in salary cap but hopefully if we get these guys it will be crucial even if we get you know two of them it'd be huge so uh okay so Derek Broussard's not coming to us so that's down another about 6.5 mil which kind of sucks okay so immediately let's not even simulate another day let's try to find someone else we could possibly put in that spot and of course everyone's gone at this point Okay, so centerman, crap. I figured let's go for Wayne Simmons if we can't get Broussard because we need it, you know as many top talents as we could possibly get. It, we might have to put someone like Goudreau on the third line. Okay, so we got Leonard. That's good there. Skinner, crap. Okay, so let's try to go Philly. Of course, he's not either. John Merson doesn't either. That hurts. That really does hurt. Every top player we tried to get did not sign with us. But let's go evaluate our team and see uh, see what we could possibly do. So if we kept our team the way it is right now, we'd have these four centermen. We have Terrence, our top line, Peugeot, our second line, Goudreau, our third line, and probably Nash on our fourth line. And then we'd have a bunch of prospects after that. For left wings, we'd have, you know, straight four here, probably Dizzing on the third line, Colburn on the fourth line. We still have to get a couple AHL guys, but uh, so far it's not really looking that great. Uh, Lindholm, you know, Kapanen, Richie, and probably Blandizi, if we don't sign anyone else, would get a spot there on our forward side at least. On our defensive side, it looks like Alonco. I don't know if if he could play in the AHL just in case, but we, we'd have a top six, you know, solidified. I was just trying to get it even better with Jalmerson because immediately he would be our top line left defenseman. He would probably pair best with Shattenkirk. Then we have Martinez and probably uh, maybe Alonco, then Smith. Oh, we actually, we'd have, uh, we'd probably trade Smith, honestly. Trade, probably trade Smith and Polka for uh, you know a good right-handed defenseman. But that kind of sucks. I'm kind of glad that uh, Goldman down here can play in the AHL this year. Dobson can't, unfortunately. But we got our we got our goaltender, which is which is good. So we have you know two top ones. It looks like uh, it's gonna be a battle. Two eighty five overalls. Corpusell is probably mad because we got one similar uh, same role as him. Yep. So let's uh, let's just tell him a little competition never hurt anyone. Yeah, he sees where to scrum. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think I'm gonna try to work a trade. I mean, I hate to do it because you know I don't really want to keep making trades over and over and over again. But, like I said, I was really focusing on trying to improve our offense with a better second-line centerman. And, unfortunately, I could not do that with free agency. They didn't want to sign with me. I was kind of hoping that, like, Spezza would be there and we could pick him up. But it didn't end up working out that way. But let's go see if we could find a trade that would make sense for a better second-line centerman. I'm pretty sure I just found the best situation ever. And I was scrolling through, right? I had a couple of options we could possibly go for. And we came across Vancouver. And uh, as you can tell on your screen, Bo Horvat is, uh, is on the screen.
But not only is Bull Horvat on the screen, but he is mad. Now, I can't exactly see why he's mad, unfortunately. But I would guess it's because of playtime. I mean, you have Nolan Patrick there. You got Sedin, Granlin, Sutter. He's probably playing behind a bunch of people. But since he's upset and since he's such a low overall right now, it makes him a little bit easier to get. Now, I don't know if this is really, you know, exploiting it or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But I almost kind of want to throw shit, Chidal, Heidel, whatever he would hit this guy in there too. But I'm not going to. I just want to get straight up Boar Horvat in this trade. Because once he is at his peak, I feel like he, well, once he, you know, gets back to his normal overall, I feel like he's going to be, you know, what we want. But unfortunately, they don't really want to do that. So let's go with it. Let's go with next year's. Yeah, I want to. Just, let's just try it. Let's just go with the third, and see if that works. We also threw in the two other sentiment that we're never gonna sign. There we go. Second and third for Bo Horvat. What is his real overall? That is the question. It's probably like an 83, 82. So okay, it gives us a second line center. It gives us Pajot there as well. So that upgrades our group instantly. However. We still have a couple of restricted free agents that we need to sign. Plus, we need a couple of AHL guys. And once we do that, our roster will be pretty darn secure. We should have everyone sorted now. A bunch of new AHL guys coming in. You'll probably see them popping up here eventually. But, I mean, that Horvat trade was, uh, that was crucial. I mean, I was looking at uh, a couple of guys. Nick Cousins. I was looking at Pierre-Luc Dubois. And uh, who else is the other guy? Someone else that, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, the, the one guy from Detroit that I can never pronounce his name. But, uh, you know, that's that's good. I think this year we are going to name a captain as well. I feel like, you know, two years in, that uh, that's a good time. I was waiting for kind of like a superstar to come out. But uh, maybe that, uh, maybe because we don't have a captain, that uh, we don't have anyone to lead the way to the playoffs. So maybe we could do that. I don't really know. But as we're submitting up... I've been recording for almost uh, almost 50 minutes. A lot of it's going to be cut out like usual with the off-season videos. You know, a lot of time trying to strategize, at least behind the scenes, goes. But uh, like I said, we're going to wrap it up here. I mean, next video. Actually, you know what? We're not going to wrap it up here. So uh, upgrade seating. Yeah, I couldn't do that because I didn't have enough money. But uh, let's see what uh, let's see what a potential lineup will look like. I mean, we are going to take into consideration, you know, stats from last year. And, uh, you know, see what that is. So, uh, so I see we have a uh, kind of deal with, uh, well, that's right. We still have, uh, two restricted free agents that have not signed. So let's, uh, let's go do that real quick. So even though I was hoping to get a bunch of, uh, you know, key guys to our lineup, I still feel like we made some big acquisitions, at least in the goaltender department. It gives us, you know, 285 overall goaltenders. So them sharing the way there, I feel like will help us a little bit. And then, uh, you know, a crucial acquisition in Hopo Horvat. I mean, those two guys are, are going to be huge for us. So hopefully both of those guys sign with us there. And uh, we can move on into the preseason. If we would have signed, you know, Broussard, Skinner, uh, Jalmerson, and Leonard. If we would have gotten all four of those guys... I feel like definitely would have, we would have made the playoffs. I mean that that shouldn't have been a question at that point, but uh, you know we you only got one of them out of the guys that uh, that we originally wanted, which kind of sucks. But uh, let's just simulate right through. You know, hopefully they sign a contract, and uh, from now till preseason. If not, I guess we're gonna have to either find someone else to fill that spot, or uh, find them a contract that they do like. But uh, I mean, it's tough here in Seattle right now. I mean, our team is just not playing well. I mean, what is it? I mean, I don't really know. I mean, is it our, our very low overall? Is it our is our goaltending? Is it our consistent play? Is it, I don't know. It could be a lot of different things. But uh, let's get up to the preseason and uh, and see the new lineup. So uh, tickets, I mean, that's good. I mean, last year we had like 80% or 60%. It was something really low. So I'm really glad to see that. Maybe they're seeing that uh, we're actually trying to do something, at least for uh, for the on the ice performance part. And uh, they're gonna they're gonna stick around and hopefully see it. But uh, view owner goals, I guess let's let's look at him again. He wants us to acquire a first round pick for the upcoming draft. 
He wants us to win our home opener and like us to sell 85% of available season tickets this year. I don't know what that's going to entail. Pri uh, first overall pick. Uh, potentially, if we uh, don't make the playoffs, we could uh, trade someone, maybe. But uh, win this regular season opener, I mean, that's up to the guys on the ice. And uh, sell 85% of season tickets. Uh, you know what? I don't really know. But uh, I guess we'll do it now. Let's see what happens. So let's uh, let's get our let's get our, our I guess our roster moves in order here. Let's, uh, let's separate the guys that actually have a chance of making it compared to the guys that don't have a chance of making it. So uh, no one there really I can see. What about down here? Uh, that looks good for for those guys there. Uh, defense. Uh, that is not our lineup. Uh. Okay. Oh, that's right. We don't have uh, we don't have Polka. So I guess for the time being that uh, well, if we're gonna do anything, let's give us a, a guy that actually deserves to be have a chance. But uh, we will try to uh, to sign Polka in the meantime. But uh, goaltenders, I shouldn't have to touch right now. But uh, let's go best line, see where it puts us. So uh, we're gonna be looking at something like this: Bo Horvat up to an eighty-three. That's good to see. Twenty-four still overall uh, age, I should say. Uh, Lubid, uh, this guy actually should be sent nowhere. So let's put these guys in the lineup where they should be. So if we're going from last year's performance, it's going to look something like this. With a better second line center, hopefully that uh, that helps out our second line. I mean, Dvorak did grow in overall. That's good. However, you know, we have a little bit more of a, a more offensive you know, top three line, which I do do like a lot. It puts Peugeot more of a defensive role than an offensive, so that might help us as well. Lindholm, I'm hoping he jumps up this year and takes over Richie's spot, and that way we can move him down. So hopefully at the end of the year, we can at least swap these two to where Lindholm's actually doing well. Actually, you know what? I hate to do it, honestly. No, I can't. Richie, Richie's been... You know what? Let's... Let's see what the last year's stats were. 39 points. Okay, so he comes off 54 points, puts up 39. Lindholm, 35, comes off of 53. So they're both looking for, you know, chances back in the lineup. However, for the sake of our franchise, I want Lindholm to play with better players. So eventually, you know, he could play with some scorers. So we have two playmakers on each line right now. We have Spooner and Turris, and we have Horvat and and Lindholm, and then we have Kapanen and Dvorak as our main scorers. However, if Dvorak doesn't perform, we still have 24 goal Dzingel over here that could potentially fill up, uh, you know, move up in the lineup. But as for defense, uh, we are not going to have that lineup. We are going to have probably Brodeen there, and then something like this, with eventually Polka filling the spot of Yaros. But in the meantime, that's where he's going to sit. Uh, you know, and the third line. But we have a, a lock out, you know, our first round pick from this year. Hopefully, and I say this very loosely, hopefully our team will be good this year. Overall wise, we uh, we have very good players. I mean, he goes from an 83 to an 86. I mean, he, come on. I mean, if we have these two guys playing well, we should do, we should do fine. Uh, Lubedev, I, I, I'm going to say his name wrong every single time. But uh, let's send uh, let's send those two guys down since we pretty much already have our forward set and uh, they don't really have a competition there. But uh, Blandizi and this guy, let's send both of these guys down. And it looks like we have to uh, look in the next move. We have to uh, get a little bit of salary going. But uh, you know what? Let's let's go finish off now. We might as well. The video's gonna be long enough as it is, and uh, you know it doesn't really matter. We just set the line sort of. Uh, we're gonna need to acquire some salary, which uh, which sucks for us because it signs basically a meaningless player that uh, we need to pick up. Here we are on the captains and jersey screen, and I have everyone unselected from you know captains right now. But now it's time. We gotta make a captain decision, and I feel like you know it has to be. It has to be one person. It's been the person that uh, has been leading this team, at least uh, at least on our defensive end and offensively. But we got to give it to number 22, Kevin Shattenkirk. I mean, 
he's been dominant on the back end and no real forward has been up there with him. However, we still have two assistants to give out or associates, whatever you really want to call it. But we got to give it to, uh, to Spooner. I mean, he's been up there every single time. Top of, the, top of the leaderboard, scored the first ever goal in Seattle attack history. And uh, I feel like he deserves it more than uh, more than most people on this team. However, one other A. Honestly, I feel like it has to go to Turris. But then again, I feel like it should go to someone else because he's rather new to our team. But I can't really give it to anyone else because he he is up there as far as you know overall, and he's up there in leadership. But I feel like this is gonna be our our, our leadership going forward. This is, I mean, yes, they're wearing the three letters. I guess two letters for three. You get the point. But I feel like this is gonna be our, our good lineup going forward. And uh, I feel like this is where we're gonna wrap it up. Right here is uh, right on our jersey screen. They're recording for over an hour. It's been going on long enough, but like I said, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you did enjoy, hit the like button down below. Next video should be in the first couple months of the regular season with a new team. We have a captain now, and we'll see uh, what goes forward from here. But like I said, guys, if you did enjoy, hit the like button down below. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button. And as always, guys, we'll see you next time. I want you forever, Scars on my body so I can take you wherever like I want you hey, forever even when we're not together Scars on my body I can look at you and never